Good afternoon, Ralph E. Hartman, right in Canada for Congress here on the Village Plaza parking lot. There's been a lot of good uh, supportive commenting and uh, I really appreciate it. People passing by I don't even know, riding by, past in cars, driving past, uh, men in work trucks sometimes, children nicely commenting. Every day I experience what is really an extraordinary amount of considerate commenting and I just want to say that I really appreciate it all. And you know, through years, I've mentioned before that I've been keeping a day-to-day -day journal every day through many years, most all of it here from here in Sarasota. And I try to note uh, as much of the nice commenting as I can to remember in the future when I, when I review the journals. Today, as a matter of fact, I was review, continuing a review of the month of December of 2006. As a matter of fact, it was Christmas Day. A pretty lady uh, uh, who alleged uh, being singer Amy Grant commented, and unfortunately, uh, she, she was a lot of uh, friendly commenting, but sometimes she said some controversial words also. And on the particular day, the comment was, when we're going to have to come out of this closet, Al should die. And I thought, when I read that again today, I thought, I wonder what was meant by that. You know, she sings beautifully, and you know that she has a song named El Shaddai, and uh, it's kind of a, a pretty uh, religiously uh, inspiring kind of a song, meant to be. And so I thought about it some more, and I'm thinking, you know, the father, the father El Hartman, who staged his death years ago, must have gotten to her in some way also from rumoring from when I was a kid. I, I made a video about a, a week ago, I think it was, mentioning that when I was a child that uh, Al Hartman, uh, who staged his death when I was an 11-year-old, had apparently secretly been of some kind of Hitler-oriented uh, uh, kind of activity. And uh, what, But of course, when I was a kid, I didn't realize that. So anyway, when I was in junior high school, uh, an interest I had was uh, history. And uh, certainly one of the most significant, or the most significant historical incident in, in recent past had been World War II. And so when I was attending uh, Glaze Junior High School uh, in 1968 and 69, uh, a teacher assigned us at the beginning of a history uh, 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 class, the first class of the year, that by the end of the semester we were supposed to write a good, uh, complete essay, some kind of a history subject. I don't remember what the exact rules were. But I decided that I was going to write an exhaustive, excellent essay about World War II. So anyway, uh, not, I'm not a warlike person myself, but it was, it was the big event of the, uh, of the particular time back in the 60s. It had happened only 20 years before. So anyway, that's what I had resolved to do. But unfortunately, during that particular time in my life, I made some mistakes. And, you know, I didn't think much of it when I sometimes walked into the school library and, and walked back out with a book without checking it out the way I was supposed to have. But I thought, I'm going to, for my, my report, I'm going to make it so good it's going to have photos, it's going to have maps, charts, everything. So anyway, I proceeded to cut uh, maps and charts and uh, photos out of uh, various World War II books. But then when it came time to start making the report, the thought occurred to me, how can I use any of this? The teacher's going to see that it's from books that are missing from the library. So anyway, I had to redo uh, the, the, the uh, essay and uh, make a briefer, less, less exhaustive effort and uh, complete it. I guess I had a, a B or a C on it. Well, well, anyway, what I wanted to say is, is that back then, that it turned out that my father was leaving, living in secret and was of actual conspiracy. So he started to, and my mother and others apparently, started to pivot some of their act, secret activities onto details from my past, including the partly damaged collection of books in my closet. Uh, he was hoping, of course, that my mother wouldn't notice them, and I didn't want to be in trouble, and I didn't want them to be found in the garbage can, so I kept them in a box in my closet, bedroom closet. So anyway, about a year before, during the last year of elementary school, Kenwood Elementary School, I mentioned the school last night in a tweet that I think is kind of funny, and it's actually factual. Uh, the book fair. I purchased a book named The Rise and the Fall of the Third Reich by William Shirer, because I thought I was going to continue the, the studying. But I'll tell you, and I was starting to make my own book collection. That's what I wanted to do back then, is collect books and have my own book, uh, my own uh, uh, bookshelf. So anyway, I bought the book, uh, it was prom had a prominent, uh, it was a paperback that had a red cover with the Nazi swastika on it. And I thought I was going to read uh, uh, a lot of it, but I tell you, I lost interest in it almost immediately. It was too complex and boring. 
And I really wasn't interested in anything so, uh, so uh, detailed pertaining to the, you know, the political projection for pro, uh, progression of Nazism. So it was a passing interest, like I already said, also pertaining to the war games that uh, that uh, myself and another bo uh, boy played back then. And uh, you know, by the end of junior high school and the move to Sebring, that that I basically didn't have any of that kind of interest anymore. And I guess I, I apparently disappointed the former stepfather, Bill Love, who had positioned the, the, the house. Uh, he bought a house right near the, the other house, about four or five uh, doors away that had the sign in front saying SS War Memorabilia. So anyway, it's true that I studied pertaining to the, uh, to, to pertain to the Nazis back then, uh, but it included the, stu the study of, uh, on behalf of the Allies who had uh, uh, fought against the Hitler and with a hope that it was all that it had all been over with back in '45, like we had been taught. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to mention that again, that uh, through the years I've been hearing and reporting in my re uh, reports uh, against Third Reich kind of threats. I started hearing it. Uh, I don't know exactly when. Back in about '89. Uh, when I was forced to live out on Bee Ridge Road, they, uh, there was never any uh, actual ground level activity. But in the traffic din and the, the sound of jets or whatever, it was, it was sometimes absolutely a crescendo. So anyway, this is continuing to be on behalf of our people being saved instead, against any of the creepy genocide threats, against the threats of people being burned in ovens, against any of the uh, uh, abuse threats that I hear, that I've been reporting as well as I can, against through so many years, hoping that everyone's going to be all right. And when I review these journals and I'm reminded of friendly comments from the past, they matter. People matter. Individuals matter. And I'm still appreciating. And one of the best times of, the, of each day is to get out on the roadside, the Neva roadside, to start seeing people passing by safe and secure in their, house, in their cars, waving, smiling, sometimes nodding approval, sometimes occasionally honking a horn. I appreciate everyone's uh, consideration and if I'm chosen to be a congressman I will be as good and as diligent as I can and one of the uh, important duties will be to continue to review the journals from the past, some of it every day, maybe make, a, uh, uh, make sure to make a written report, turn it in every week and all of the various matters to be resolved on behalf of everyone being saved, for our nation continuing, become better and better in the years to come, for good, lasting peace. Thanks again for your consideration, and I hope everyone's having a safe and fun weekend.